Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. As usual, I love doing these type of updated videos and updated reviews about phones that I've personally been using for a super long time. And it's funny, with this phone, I've had an interesting relationship with it because when this phone came out, I honestly didn't really see the need for it. I thought it was really weird. I thought it was way overpriced for what it was doing. But after I bought it and after I used it and after all this time doing all these comparisons and everything, I figured, you know what, it's really not that bad. And I still think it's super important to make those first assumptions and kind of see what you're thinking so you can kind of improve and, you know, see how much these phones have actually raised the expectations for you in a phone and what you expect from technology nowadays. Now, that specific phone is the iPhone XR, if you guys probably already saw from the title. If you didn't, you probably don't even know what you're doing. This phone was released in October of 2018, and it's actually about a year old at this point. It was a year old a couple of days ago, but I forgot to make that video, and I figured I might as well do another swipe, but dude, <laughs> this phone is still completely worth it. This phone, if anything, has gotten better over time, which not a lot of phones can say that, at least a lot of phones outside of the iOS market. Even certain iPhones have gotten worse over time, but it seems like this iPhone has definitely held its own in terms of where it started with and where it is now. Now, when this thing was released a year ago, we were all memeing the heck out of it. We were like, dude, this phone doesn't even have an OLED display. Dude, it's not even like full HD. You know, we have like 1440p panels and we don't even have that on this phone. And we were all going off and for 749 for the base model, it seemed like a huge ripoff and it kind of was at a certain point. But in terms of now, I mean, you can pick this thing up brand new from the Apple store for 599, but on top of that, you can get it for way cheaper in the used market. So this phone has definitely hit some massive depreciation because as I guessed it, Apple rate lowered the price of the iPhone 11, thus making this phone in the used market go down even more. So that's a pretty good deal for those of you who don't even own it. And because the iPhone 11 was so similar to the iPhone XR, the design wise, I mean, it's pretty much the same exact thing. The 11 screen can go a little bit higher, but the XR screen is still perfectly fine for me. We have a 6.1 inch liquid retina IPS panel, whatever they want to call it. It wasn't a great panel. It wasn't like amazing, but it's definitely not bad. And when I'm looking at it and when I'm comparing it to even other IPS panels and even certain OLED panels, I'm like, dude, it's not that bad of a display at all. You know, I was kind of like overhyping it in the beginning with, but it seems like now it's like a decent panel. The 11 you know, still a decent panel as well. But this one, in my opinion, we have that true tone display. We have a decent sized lack of bezel on it. So there's not too much bezel going around with it, which is really nice. But in terms of the outside, there really isn't too much going on. And there's not that much that you can hate on it either. So it goes both ways, in my opinion. And in terms of the way it's held up, it's been held holding up just fine. I have some scratches here and there, but it's not that big of a deal to me. In terms of the software, though, we've seen this thing get released with iOS 13, with iOS 12, and it eventually got iOS 13. Right now, we're on 13.2, and I've ran, I think, almost all iOS 13 betas on it, and especially now, and this phone hasn't gotten slower. It's literally more of the same from iOS 12. This phone is pretty much the same exact speeds for me since about, like, iOS 12.1. I haven't seen, like, a huge increase in speed or anything like that, so it's been perfectly fine for me. I don't really have any complaints about it. It's still one of the fastest phones in the market. It's still an extremely speedy device. I've had no issues at all and software wise it's still going to last a very long time if you get it now it's going to last a super super long time but we, we have gotten a lot of iOS versions on this thing and with iOS 14 I'm predicting that it's going to be a pretty big upgrade in my opinion and this phone will definitely be supporting it obviously so that's a super awesome thing in my head and like I said, man, in terms of performance, we have the A12 Bionic chip, hexa-core CPU, whatever, three gigabytes of RAM. Really, the RAM is the only thing people might hate on it for, but even now, I mean, the 11 Pro, 11 Max, I mean, those have four gigabytes of RAM, which really isn't that big of an increase from three. The 11 has four as well, so in my opinion, for me using it, I've pretty much used this phone extensively throughout the year, not only just using it, but also comparing it to many other phones. And what I can tell you is, in terms of performance, it is not really that bad. It's not bad at all. It's very good, in my opinion. Could it be better? Yes, of course. It could have more RAM. It could be, you know, have the A13 Bionic Fusion chip, whatever. Regardless, it's an extremely fast device. Whatever you're going to do with it, whether it's heavy gaming, heavy whatever, heavy lifting, squatting, whatever you want to do with it. It's going to be extremely fine. Really, the only issue I see with this thing in terms of performance maybe is the lack of, you know, an extra gig of RAM. Next year, we should be seeing probably like six gigs of RAM within it. But in this one, you won't be that slow. Trust me, you'll be perfectly fine in my opinion. So in terms of performance, in my opinion, it's so very good. It's still one of the fastest phones in the market. Of course, the Galaxy S10, Note 10, OnePlus 7T Pro, whatever. Those phones are going to be faster, but these, this one is still probably in the top like 5% of phones in the market currently being used. So that pretty much covers that. Let's go ahead and talk about the camera. And even since the beginning, this phone has gotten super, super great with the camera. 
It's missing some things like deep fusion that the newer iPhones have. My 11 Pro has it. My iPhone 11 has it. This phone does not have it. It's not that big of a deal like I've stated. I mean, I'm going to get over it. But regardless, whatever anybody says, this thing can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second where the Google Pixel 4 XL cannot and never forget that, okay? Google should have at least put 4K at 60 frames. That's the least they could do. And they did not do that. But the iPhone XR can shoot 4K at 60 frames and 1080p at 30 frames on the front camera, which is really nice. A single 12 megapixel camera on the back, a 7 megapixel camera on the front. And ultimately, it it's, does the job. You know, I like it a lot. Even when I was comparing it, and at first I was like, you know, it's probably not that good as a single sensor. You know, I was kind of freaking out about it. But after I did all those initial camera comparisons, and even now comparing it to the Pixel 4 XL, which I think I did, at least I compared it to the iPhone 11. And yes, the quality might be better there, but the 10 Rs camera is still a killer phone in my opinion in terms of the camera. So that pretty much covers up the camera aspect of it. And even in terms of the battery life, it has a 2,942 mAh battery. My phone actually did depreciate a little bit in terms of the battery life. I think it's at like 98%, maybe. I don't actually remember, but it did degrade a little bit. Not the end of the world. I honestly don't even care about it. So if I'm not freaking out about it, then you probably shouldn't freak out about it. But if you get a used one, chances are it might have depreciated more. I tend to take kind of good care of my devices. I drop them a lot, but sometimes I do kind of take care of them, I'll be honest. So if you are planning on getting an iPhone XR, make sure you kind of make sure it's, you know, in a decent condition, in my opinion. But 2,942 million powers is not a small amount. The iPhone 11 is just a smidge better, smudge better, a little bit better. Even the 11 Pros is just a little bit better too. So this battery, in my opinion, is still holding up. It's still very good. And every time I do iOS comparisons or whatever with a 10R, it's always one of the last phones to die in terms of standby time. So that's a really, really good sign when you're looking at a phone and thinking of the longevity of it. So ultimately, man, what I can tell you is this is a no-brainer. This thing is still completely worth it. Over the year, it's gotten many updates. It's gotten many changes. The public opinion of this phone has completely changed, in my opinion. From the beginning with, we were hating on it. But as usual, Apple has a way of kind of, you know, knowing the public's opinion beforehand and getting used to it and then completely changing the opinion or even forgetting the opinion like when i was using this thing i forgot about the display i forgot about the you know kind of weird build quality sometimes i forgot about the single sensor i forgot about the bigger bezels around it you know it's not that big of a deal and when you're looking at an iphone 11 like the 11 seems to be like a super flagship phone now because you know a it's cheaper but b it has that double camera and it adds a lot more functionality within it too. And Apple is just so good at marketing. So think about this. We were in the beginning of the year, even last year, like I stated, we were hating on this phone. At least I was. And I'll be completely honest, I was wrong, but I was hating on this phone. I was like, don't buy it. It's this, it's that. But now, like completely, like I don't even think about those opinions anymore. I don't even, I don't even think that this phone is like super slow or like ugly or this or that. And like I said, it's funny how opinions change like that. So ultimately, guys, this phone is still completely worth it and not only is it completely worth it this year it's worth it next year the year after that and the year after that the main thing to keep in mind though is that right now in the used market these things are selling for probably like less than 500 i've seen these go for like four or something so if you're lucky you can probably end up picking one up for a very very competitive price that is nothing. That is nothing for a phone of this caliber. It's getting more software updates than many other phones that I know, and it's going to be lasting a long time. So if you want to go that right, you can always do that. But as I've stated before, and I haven't been plugging these too much, but I'm going to start doing it again. You can always pick these up on Amazon in terms of certified refurbished, which I would highly recommend you to do. Sometimes they're a little bit more expensive than like on eBay or something, but they're in better quality. They usually come with warranties. And they're much easier to buy than going on eBay and buying one from there. So if you want to get one from Amazon, the first link down in the description will take you to a link. You can go ahead and buy it from there. You can help support the channel at the same time. But that is pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or anything, leave it down in the comment section below. Hit that like button. That would mean so much. But definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it would mean so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram. All those links are linked down below. I'd really appreciate it if you guys could check it out. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.